Welcome to KBO Chat Interviews. Join us as we interview some of the best apps that integrate with QuickBooks Online and learn how these apps are making life better for accountants and bookkeepers. Hey guys, this is Kathy. I am here with Taryn with NoFi. And uh, we want to know a little bit more about Noify and what you guys do. Yeah. So Noify is a all-in-one project management software for construction contractors. Uh, we specialize in job costing, giving real-time job cost reports on labor and materials. And it's all fully integrated with QuickBooks Online. So they don't need to enter anything directly into QuickBooks. They just manage their jobs and we take care of that side of it for them. So then you're, then the users, or you set up the users over there and everything moves over in a QBO so they don't Correct. have to go into QBO. Exactly. So for the contractor using Noify, it's almost like Noify is an extra employee taking care of entering everything into QuickBooks for them. So they don't need to learn very much about you know, how to actually enter into QuickBooks. They just you know, learn how to use Noify. It's built for construction so it makes sense to their business and it takes care of all of the accounting. Uh, Noify serves a variety of businesses, but we're mainly built with, for trade contractors, trade subcontractors. So think plumbing, electrical, HVAC, uh, painting is another big market for us. Uh, we also work with a lot of residential remodelers, uh, companies that are just starting to do bigger projects than just single trade, and maybe they have both their own laborers as well as some people that they're hiring to do some subcontracting work on the project. So with the trade subcontractors, those are the ones that do the AIA form yeah, and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, commercial subcontractors uh, often struggle to put together the AIA form, and so it's useful for them to have a system where they just hit a couple of buttons, put in the right values, and it outputs the very complicated G702 and G703 form, uh, so they don't need to learn how to do it or struggle with Word or Excel to put it together. Good. And yeah, then they don't have to worry about the yeah. math not working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll seen. take care of the math. <laughs> yeah, and they'll, uh, you know, it automatically calculates retainage, which is always a bit of a pain for them to do. Uh, plus, it'll build a retainage invoice afterwards. So it's not like that'll escape from them. Uh, they'll always have a reminder that they need to invoice the client for the retained values. How do you deal with change orders? Uh, change orders are part of the same contract in Noify, so it's not like you need to go find a workaround of adding a separate job for the change order management. You just go to the list of line items from the schedule of values that you initially set up, and you have an add change order option, which is also e-signable, just like our proposals. Uh, that way the client can actually sign off before moving forward on these, uh, which we found is usually a constant struggle for people who don't have anything for e-signature. The client will give them the verbal, like, please do this additional work, and they will not end up paying them for it. And so it's nice to have a little bit of information from the client first. Uh, well, a little bit of everything mentioned so far, but uh, I'd say, you know, uh, the automation of, you know, being able to manage your proposals and having that go to e-signature, uh, plus we customize the proposal documents for all of the contractors. So if they want to have a specific feel that goes with their company and they want to send it through Noify, that is an option. Uh, and then it just gives the client a more professional uh, feeling of your company when you're initially uh, communicating with them. You know, being able to send something from a cloud-based software looks a little bit better uh, to present yourself rather than just scribbling on a napkin, this is how much I'll do the job for and handing it over in person. I think a lot of uh, people, especially working in the QuickBooks network, kind of will compare Noify to you know, some of the apps or that you kind of just plug it onto QuickBooks and it does one small thing. You know, Noify for the contractor is the main point of input. And so, you know, it's a lot to learn. It's a big piece of software, but obviously we keep it simple to learn and we do free customer support and training. So we're always happy to work with anyone who wants to learn how to use Noify. Uh, so just to show a little bit more about what the inside of Noify looks like here. Uh, this contract job screen is kind of uh, the home base where you can see an overview of where you stand in your jobs. You know, since Noify is a project management tool beyond just the accounting side of everything, I get to also see statuses, you know, whether or not the job is active, if we're waiting on a response on change order, uh, jobs that are you know, still in the bidding stage, or if we're waiting on a uh, uh, lead to be processed. And I do get this real-time uh, cost versus budget reporting as we go through jobs. I get to see work in progress, you know, my earned revenue. Uh, and setting up these projects is pretty simple as well, uh, where I can add a new job, 
Uh, I can choose a job name. I can choose a client right from my QuickBooks database. So I don't need to re-enter any of this. It just keeps syncing in both directions. Uh, and we do have progress invoicing for fixed price contracts that allow change order management. Plus, we also have that same format of contract style, but we can, uh, we can export the uh, AIA style invoice document. Uh, using professional style for job costing is how we can set up a budget before quoting a price to the client. And the idea is that with Noify, you can get a really detailed budget in a matter of seconds by adding what we call job phases. So I could say we need to use a ser uh, sorry uh, by using uh, what we call service templates. So when I choose to use a service template, I can choose what type of service we're offering, type in the number of units, and Nofi will automatically build a budget for this project, saying how many of each material we're going to need to buy, how many hours it'll take our workers, if necessary, it'll pull in a subcontractor budget, and it can even include a description of the work that we'll be performing here. Uh, I can go through a project plan as long as we have a consistent list of phases here. All I have to do is write in these different units and know if I will continuously put together all of my information I'm going to need before I quote a price to the client. Uh, we'll just do these two phases for now to keep this simple. Uh, but when I click this create bid button, we really start automating the process even further by using that information to let you quote a price to the client. This is all about our automation and organization to keep you from having to re-enter any of this information. So uh, I can use the interior drywall budget from earlier, write in a markup percentage, and it'll automatically apply the, pr uh, the pricing to the contract for me. And then aside from just generating the document, because we do build very detailed proposal documents in Noify, and we can customize these for you as well. So we actually can uh, change around the layout to make sure that it prints out in the layout that you like as opposed to our default, which we're looking at here. But when I hit send out for signature, and I'll send this to myself so you can see what this looks like, uh, it'll mark the job as out for signature so I know where the current status is with this project. I can even add a reminder for myself to follow up with the customer, and I could send them a reminder to let them know, uh, you know we need a response on this. And the customer will actually get this layout of whatever your custom document looks like, and they can respond right through Noify. Once it's signed, we email you back letting you know you won the proposal, and you're good to start tracking all of your costs and invoicing the client. Uh, plus, we'll actually switch this job from Noify, from out for signature, to active. So if I need to submit an invoice for this job, all I need to do is click Invoice Now since it's been approved. And actually, since this is an AIA form, it'll ask for some uh, final information to put on the uh, AIA invoices, such as retainage values. I'll go, ahead and hit <clears throat> I'll go ahead and hit Invoice Now. I'll put in the last date of the billing period. And then I just put in a percentage of completion of each line, and then if necessary, an amount of stored materials. And it'll generate the classic AIA style invoice document, which I can actually email to my client right through Noify. So you can see that I don't really need to re-enter any of this information. It's just that same info from my budget being used and manipulated to actually give me proposals to create invoices. And if you need to do AIA invoices, you see that it automatically generates the format. So it's a huge time saver, so I don't have to do any of this stuff in Excel. Uh, Noify will just generate it all for me. Uh, creating invoices in Noify also will push them to QuickBooks. You don't actually have to log these invoices directly into QuickBooks, but using Noify, sending out your invoices through our system will uh, make sure that it shows up in your accounts receivable, so it never needs to be entered a second time there. Same thing goes for payments, where I can record that I've uh, received payment from the client in Noify, which will push to QuickBooks, but I can also pull that payment from QuickBooks into Noify, so it's really whatever flow works best for you. That's the invoicing side of Noify. Again, we like to track the cost. You know, being a job costing platform, this is obviously a very important thing to our system. And so I can actually just click order materials, choose these items from a list, and when I start PO process, it'll just ask for a vendor and create a purchase order for me using all of that info. 
That way I don't have to retype any of this. I just hit submit and it generates the PDF and I can email it out right to the vendor. The last part of this material costing process would be actually logging the bill. So when the vendor sends me a bill, I can log that right into my Notify account as well. Again, it doesn't need to be logged directly into QuickBooks since when we log a bill in Notify, it syncs with QuickBooks. So I say add a new bill with ABC Supply and we can even upload the bill document image if you wanna do that. But when we log a bill in Notify and choose a vendor, it shows us a list of everything that we've submitted in purchase orders and it shows the different purchase orders and their corresponding jobs. So all I have to do is choose which items in the list that we're being billed for and I can submit this and it'll send it to my QuickBooks account. Now, when I go to my job costing, if I look at my contract jobs page, I can see that project updated to show me my current profitability. It shows me my contract value, the amount I've billed out of the contract, the amount paid, and then if necessary, the amount that's being retained by the client. And it'll also show me my material cost to date versus my budget for materials, and the same with our labor cost versus materials as well. And again, just so we have some management of our contract and the whole change order flow, instead of having to create a new job or have any kind of workaround for change orders, I can open up the contract that I initially quoted to my client. I can say add change order, additional supplies needed. I can write in a price here, or I can actually break this down here where I could say, yo, I'm going to need extra lumber. We're gonna to need to buy 300 more studs with a 50% markup. And I'll quote the pricing here. Plus I can also include labor if necessary. I'll say I'm gonna need labor hours. It'll take us 50 hours. And I'll quote a price that way. And our change orders are also available for a digital e-signature. So if you wanna actually get the client to write off on all of these before you send it out, that, uh, or sorry, before you invoice, that's an option as well. Now we just have a little bit more of a formal document and it's a little bit more professional for when you're communicating with your client. Then once this is active, it'll be another invoiceable line. And since we keep track of all your progress invoicing, if I click invoice now, it's gonna show me the amount billed to date so I can make any final uh, adjustments. So let's say I wanna invoice 100% of my drywall work now. It'll even remove the value from our stored materials that we've invoiced previously, since now they're part of our completed work. I'll invoice my change order as well, and it'll generate my second pay application. And that's a little bit more about how our invoicing works in Noify as far as our progress invoicing and change order management goes. I'll just go ahead and manually record this payment. And since I've logged a lot of different uh, invoices and not a lot of costs, we'll be looking at a hefty 89% profit on this project. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you receive a bill, and you log it in Noify, we give you the ability to adjust the pricing in this screen. So if you send out a PO and you have for your own internal reference, the unit price set to $4, but then you receive the bill and it comes out to be 562 or something very specific, which is much more likely. When you log that bill, that's the value that will be sent to QuickBooks and that's the value that we're gonna to apply to the cost of the job. So you know that all of your job costing and your accounting are gonna be as accurate as possible. Yeah, it's actually a pretty quick process. Uh, it's done in your catalog, just as if you were adding a new service. You choose this as a template, and I could say something like, you know, uh, widget installation. I could put in a quick uh, description, you know, installation of widgets and say this includes the following one site prep, two drop in, three installation as per plans. I could say we budget this per each widget. 
Uh, the default price is only if you want to skip the budgeting process and say, we know that no matter what, we charge $50 per widget. And I get to choose either uh, the ability to write in a labor budget by saying, you know, $10 per widget, or I could say laborer one hour per widget. Uh, or I could put it in minutes, you know, I'll go a little bit smaller with this, you know, 20 minutes per widget. Then for materials, again, I can just write in, it'll cost us $20 of material cost per widget, or I could say budget by materials. So if I have an item in the catalog called widget, I guess I don't have anything in here, but this is where I would be able to put in the uh, specific materials I need. So like if I need wire for this, I could say, you know, for each of these, it'll cost me, uh, you know, 20 feet of wire. And then when I have uh, a subcontractor that needs to help, I could say, you know, we also need to hire a subcontractor that will charge us $10 per widget. And it just creates a service like that. And now I can use this when I'm, whenever I'm setting up a uh, budget in my system. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we do have a smartphone app. It's a little bit trickier for me to pull up an example here. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you go to our time tracker, you can actually see that we have the ability to enter time per employee. And this can be automated through scheduling. So what did I number that job? So this is our corporate calendar. This is where I see all the different uh, open projects that we have going on uh, for this month. And then I can add something to the calendar by saying, you know, we started a new job on the 26th. It was uh, project 1413. And our framing work will take us 10 days to complete. This adds it to the calendar so I can see, you know, what's actually happening here uh, over the course of a month. But if I click on the job board, I can actually set up what shows up on everyone's smartphone app. So I can grab my crew and assign them to a job on specific days or what we call full time, which just means that they're scheduled uh, across every day that this is scheduled. And then when someone goes to track time, they can open up their app and it'll show them what they're supposed to be working on this day. And if you need to send them more information, you can notify them right from the job board to give them more information. And then when people check in and check out, their time will be submitted into this check in and check out view where I could see information about what day they checked in, what they checked into, the time in and the time out and their distance from the job site at each location. If it's, it's at each time. Yeah, so uh, all this will go into the review time section. Uh, we also have a foreign view just to show you this. So whoever's in charge of time can enter it by pulling up a phase and writing in the hours. This is just who's scheduled to work on this. And you'll see how this affects the cost of the job here. Plus, if I open up that project plan, it'll update my labor cost to date. Do the labor cost include taxes and like all the burden stuff on top of it? Yeah, so when you're setting up your account, in your rates section, you can set up as much detail as you want with your base salary, any benefits, taxes, insurance, workman's comp, union wages, and then the other is just for an overhead factor. So if you want to put in anything else that's not included in our calculator, that's fine. And the important part is to get the uh, hourly rate here uh, for the sake of job costing on each entry. Uh, so if you don't want to use our calculator, you can always just write in one manual value. That'll update the right-hand side of the screen. And that's how we'll be job costing whenever they enter their hours. And this is one of my QuickBooks synced accounts. It's actually connected to a QuickBooks uh, accountant account. QBOA. And we have this tab where I can see all different transactions that have moved back and forth between Noify and QuickBooks. And if I go to this expenses defaults, I can control how anything on the accounts payable and expenses side syncs with QuickBooks. We let you choose an overall expense account for everything that we push to QuickBooks from Noify. But if we want to get more specific, you could choose an individual expense account for each vendor. 
Same thing goes with payment accounts. And then it also works like this for income. Only instead of choosing an income account, you choose a specific service. So you can actually use QuickBooks products and services catalog, and you can have an overall one, or you can choose per each client, which income account you're gonna use, which income service you're gonna use. But since you can also use all of your products and services from QuickBooks when you're using Noify, you actually don't even need to have a default per job, but within each job, you can create each line item using a different service. So you can really get down into granular detail of you know, how this is going to be syncing with QuickBooks for each individual transaction. Then we also have the ability to track classes and locations. You just set which one you want to use for each job. So let's say I have residential and commercial as my standard uh, classes. We can set these so all of our uh, different transactions use these uh, when they sync over to QuickBooks. And then this is just for when we add new items to our products and services database in Noify. This controls how we sync them as far as their default income and expense account goes. Plus, if I enter an expense with one of these uh, items, we'll reference this expense account before we reference the expense account for the vendor. So that way we can get even more granular expense account reporting all the way down to the individual line of each expense. All of our pricing shown on the page is our base price. Um, we do present the pricing for a yearly subscription here. Uh, we generally start people on a monthly account. That's the starting price, but then if you need to add additional users, since the account only comes as one, it's $15 per user per month for a full access user. It's $5 if they only need mobile access. So I think for tracking time and entering uh, purchases, images from the job site, comments from the job site. And then if you have a user that isn't entering their own information, but someone logs it for them, that's a non-access user, a $1 per user per month. So what's an example of a non-access user? Uh, some people still uh, prefer to have a foreman track time for all the employees. And so if the employees don't actually need to log themselves in and out, you don't need to spend $5 on them a month since they're not actually getting access to the phone. 